educational. And could you run data on pretty much anything you want with Neo4j? What do you mean? Like, if I, if I decide to I don't know, do something on sports and run like sports data. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can. Um, I gotta drop my fantasy baseball team soon. So. So <laughs> one of my. Uh, so one of the like you asked. The question is like, should I use this or Hadoop for my for data analysis? Is like the general question you're asking. So Neo4j is good if you, um, like, there's two versions of looking at data. Like, I'm a member of the data, and then I can see my neighbors or your god looking down at the data. Um, Neo4j is better if you're like, you're, if you think more of the I'm a data point. What can I see around me? Versus I'm God looking down at the data. Um, what statistics can I draw out of it? It'll do both. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a better at the at local query, queries around local parts of the data as opposed to global. Gotcha. Um, but you can do both and I think a lot of people just if you have to do some really heavy heavy lifting just do a combination because I mean at the end it's a database it's meant to store data not really do data analytics it's just also happens to be good at doing data analytics. Awesome. Everyone, round of applause. Seriously, without Christina and Neo4j, we wouldn't have been able to put on as great of a hackathon uh, as we've been able to. So, you know, a huge shout out to them. Uh, yeah, give them. Uh, also, next up, I wanted uh, to invite Todd Albert to say a few words. Uh, they are also a sponsor this evening, uh, this morning. I'm just going to stand right here for time's sake. Um, I found out I was going to be talking 12 minutes ago, um, which was right before Christina started. Um, so I just want to, I'm sorry to the judges that I'm going to have my back to you because I really want to talk to the teams that are here. Um, I got around to all the teams uh, last night and got to just say everything I saw, the ideas, the collaboration from, you know, these young teenagers making VR to, you know, Pro team from FPNL and everywhere in between, you guys killed it last night and came up with some really incredible projects. You all should be proud. I think everybody goes home a winner today, and uh, you know I, I'm just really impressed with what I saw. And you know when you guys find yourself looking for a job, come see me. So um, that's all. Just want to make sure. Up. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. So, so I learned about speed from about 12 minutes and 37 seconds. Ago. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Was I the only one that got told this? Better than 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> the uh, from FBL and Nextera also on Palm Beach Tech's board and chair the education committee. And I think what you guys are doing today goes a long way toward what we're trying to do in Palm Beach, and that is build the tech community. And so this is awesome. Thanks to Joe for uh, all the hard work you're getting us to today. And uh, looking forward to the projects. into a tech hub. What that means is not just every single tech company possible being in Palm Beach County, 
but every single professional giving of themselves to that community around them. Being a tech hub means nothing if you do not improve the community with your skills, with your gifts. Becoming a tech hub, again, is not about the job numbers, it's not about the corporations, it's not about the big capital fundraising rounds. While those are all nice, it's about how do we create a community feeling around that all. all right? That's what I think we did here this weekend, and I'm very, very proud of everybody for being a part of it. Uh, most importantly, uh, we have to thank our coaches uh, who tirelessly uh, sweated it out with us and sweated it out with me on Slack for months helping plan this thing. Of course, uh, Jeremy uh, Lawson, Todd Alpert, Greg Block, Christina, Damian Montero, and Jason. Uh, give everybody a round of applause. Those are the guys that put in the grit to this thing. It really, really did. Uh, in addition to that, um, I had this on my slide on Friday, but I do want to recognize our staff uh, with Palm Beach Tech. Uh, we have Corey Brown, our community manager in the back with the <laughs> And his uh, arch nemesis, Stephanie Buzano, our communication <laughs> And they keep me out of trouble. Uh, so I wanted to formally introduce, and if you all want to really quickly introduce yourselves so the uh, teams understand who they're going to be speaking to, uh, we have uh, six judges. I'm going to allow you guys to start with Chris and go on down and just quickly say who you are uh, in just a, a few seconds, and you know, I'll allow them to introduce themselves. But please, for the one time we can, and I know we're getting into a groove with this, give them one big round of applause. Make them feel good. They're going to be good. About a, it's about a year, two years here going live uh, downtown, and uh, we're hiring. <laughs> so that's something else we like to, to come up to these events to see what kind of talent we have here. And we're we absolutely back Joe and what Palm Beach Tech is doing to, to build the tech hub, to build the community, and, and reinforce the skills that we need to make us successful. So thank you. Team from Boca Raton Tech Garage. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Thank you. Hi, we are the VR Tech Garage team, and basically we made a science-based learning game um, based in virtual reality. So in 1980, there were 143,000 black men of all ages in prison and 463,700 enrolled in college. In 2014, there were 2.3 million black men of all ages in prison and 1.4 million enrolled in college. According to the Florida Department of Education, 53% of fifth grade students, which equates to about 7,000 students, are below satisfactory levels of success in science. Our hypothesis is that developing 21st century skills and igniting the passion for learning at a young age, at a young enough age so that schools can make a difference will increase the number of minority students who are on the path to college and not incarceration. Uh, education is a business and us as students are the customers, but as customers, we are being built. So we, like reading from textbooks and we can learn from them easily but there are many kids that are failing their end of course exams because they don't like reading from textbooks and they can't and no teacher can make them read from the textbooks so teachers instead of teaching students the way that the teachers want to be taught they need to think about how the students want to learn and books are not the solution in that case <laughs> So our solution is using a virtual reality app or a virtual reality game that teaches the core concepts of science to students struggling with their end of course exams. The viability of this is that um, the virtual reality can be uh, run on a phone with a simple headset like the Google Daydream or the Samsung Gear headset. Um, and schools can also slowly implement bigger things like um, turn the libraries into virtual reality labs or get virtual reality carts. So the game that I made was rock climbing and um, you can sort of see that it asks you a question and can't grab onto the wrong answer, so if you miss the question, you'll fall down and you have to restart. And I made this one because I remember kids were having a lot of fun playing with the rock climbing wall and I like the challenge of it, so I added an educational aspect to it. And it is the most immersive educational rock climbing wall I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> so the next game is, um, is like a kind of a ball throwing game that combines uh, hand-eye coordination with reading comprehension. So, on top of every cube, there is a different definition, and underneath every ball, there is a different vocabulary word. So you have to take the ball with the right vocabulary word and bounce it to the right cube. If you get it wrong, as you can see, I got it wrong. So it just comes back and bounces. But if you get it right, it shows correct on top. Um, this is my game. It's basic. It's a reading comprehension game where you have to um, read the question, and all the questions have very um, similar um, answers. And basically, with that game, um, if you get the answer wrong, you get um, you go to the very beginning. So this in my game is just like a maze. Uh, you go down a path, and then you come to a question, and that end. And each wall has a different answer. If you choose the wrong wall, like for example, kidney here, because that doesn't break down food, uh, it teleports you back to the beginning. But as you'll see, if you choose the right one, then you get to move on and progress. So using Elastic Cloud, we store JSON data that pertains to every individual student, and it contains um, data related to different aspects. So if they got the question right, what time they submitted it, what the question was. Um, and using Kibana, we are able to visualize this data in different ways, um, and it's an overall UI to see that data. So that's just an example of what the Kibana looks like storing the data.
So these are some of our next steps. Um, we want to deploy this in a school to test and see how it goes and possibly get some VR cards to use this application. That's awesome. and that's time, yeah. yeah. But that's their thing. We're gonna do questions from the judges. Yes. So is your application um, sending that JSON data to Kibana now? Yes. Well, currently um, it's implemented. We haven't had anyone actually play the game, um, but it would successfully send it. Um, I just randomly generate some data in the application. Is, are, are all these separate applications or one application with different? Um, the levels are currently, they're all separate in Unity, um, but we, we have a scene changer that basically connects them. So can you set up access so that maybe a, a teacher or a counselor or a parent can log in and do the analytics? Thing? Yes, exactly. Thank you guys very, very much. <laughs> For added irony, that textbook that you dropped on the ground was a physics book. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it fell faster than the other book. <laughs> <laughs> that was very well done. And I don't know if everyone noticed, but uh, m most of, uh, uh, of these guys are in middle school right now doing all of this and we're here all weekend with us so that is absolutely amazing uh, next up um, I'm assuming this is going to be awesome because the team name is awesome uh, <laughs> so we have uh, John Dimitri Christian Ong, and Praveen from Team Awesome and these guys are here all night Probably could be their grandpa. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, I might be the senior person of all, all the developers that were there in this, this uh, competition. Um, we took on being the uh, um, taking events. The idea was that there were a ton of events. There wasn't a way to really connect students and teachers um, and mentors of uh, what was actually going on in the community. And as we searched out on the internet, we found lots of websites, lots of content that was there. And <clears throat> the thought was, how do we take human nature kind of out of this and, and bring it easily manageable, uh, both for getting the information as well as maintaining making that information. So uh, we chose WordPress because it's relatively easy to deploy and to maintain. Um, it was a challenge for these three guys because uh, they were used to uh, hand coding and, and doing a lot of other tools, but they actually built all this front end. They did it. I just did some of the back end to uh, go to Google. Um, what um, our impact was, was, yeah, why don't you go through that? So the impact for this is now that we have all of this data in a centralized location, it'll make it a lot easier for more students to have access to STEM slash STEAM events in our Plus. area, which previously, as was mentioned, was not happening in the county. So for the functionality, um, basically 
we try to keep a really simple design so that when we, in case we do pass this on to the school district, that they won't have a hard problem dealing with um, fully customized code. It's just WordPress. You have your administrators. You can change stuff. And I'll get into the event admin part in a second. So what that does is we can give people editor access which means that they can get into there and everything that we screen scrape off of Google they can go through and they can choose which ones they want to actually post on the website or not and they can fill in their own categories into the stem categories so the viability of this honestly it's really easy to maintain it's really easy to use um, it's fully centralized and also, if you see at the bottom right, we took the diversity of our county into account and took the top five foreign languages and made it able so that we could translate the web page into those top five languages. So, for our innovation part, as was mentioned at the kickoff party, there was, or there is nothing like this. So, for the innovation part, <coughs> here we go. We're pretty much the first place that actually has this whole accumulation of all the STEM events in our county. And yeah, it's basically our solution to this problem, having a centralized page for everything STEM. Okay. All right, so that's that. Uh, I guess our internet is, seems to be slow here for mm -hmm. doing the translate. Um, with our event, yeah, it's working, it's going to eventually pop up. There we go. Uh, with our event admin, um, if you are a um, editor or higher as far as the um, your usability, then <coughs> you can go into the event editor and from that, you can do two things. You can take posts that you've already been put on the site and decide, because they go in as drafts. So if you have a new post that came from Google, you put it in as a draft, and then the admin can go and decide whether they actually want that to be in the uh, database or not and displayed as one of the events. And you also can go and actually get the data from Google. So. Yeah, it's not. All right, so basically with the, with the Google Scrape, um, what you're able to do is put in, while it comes up, you can notice it's mobile as well. So uh, we make sure that it worked on the phone since that is a device most people will have. All right, so from here, so let's just say I wanted STEM and teacher and I wanted to also look at mentor and submit that. No, it's not that. I don't know. This must be my laptop. All right, guys, that's time. Under the categories? Yeah, under the categories we have. Oh, Yeah, it's the scrape is loaded. Okay, so basically we have. Well, let me check. Well, any of the categories. We have, um, yeah, we have arts, computer science, engineering, revised, and math. And when either the pre entered ones or the editors select the categories, when you bring up these category pages, it will filter only for those categories. So if you're specifically looking for, say, robotics, every event in there that has a robotics tag will show up in there. What about age range and dates? Is that available? Uh, yes, those are in uh, custom fields and can be added into the description. Yeah, we took all of the posts and we did that based on uh, 
whether they were uh, elementary, middle, or high school. Um, and then there's, if there's something that has an expiration date, we put the expired date so that it wouldn't show past that date. Question, so who exactly did the added rights? Teachers? Uh, well, well, it would be based on the administrator. So yeah. you could actually, you know, this could be deployed. You might have 20 people that you want to be making sure you're adding stuff. So you give them those, the, the rights to be able to do that. Explain real quick what you're doing with the scraping. What are you using? Sure. So in the scraping, um, you've got three things. It's basically using Google Advanced Search <coughs> is, is what you're doing. So you've got that pulls back what it matches, and then based on the match, you've got what the title is. You've got a link to actually go to the physical site. You've got the description uh, of it. So if you uh, and then if you want to add it, you just click Add to Database. It puts it in as a as a post to the database. It's still a draft. So once you're in the database and you're going to add that, edit that page, you'll add the, um, the categories or group of categories that it's in, and then it's available to everybody. So I just made it really quick to be able That's, to do it. It's time. Oh, sorry. And give it up for Team Austin, awesome, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. One more question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it, you guys, you guys can ask him. You're right there. Right there. You can ask him personally with it. The reason we don't want to go is we want to give everybody a chance and all that. So bear with us, no. And we want to make sure people get out of here in time to eat lunch. Sure. Joe, are your presenters using the same internet that the rest of the staff connected? There is the room connected to as well. Uh, absolutely. We want to ask everybody to drop off the Wi-Fi to get as much bandwidth as you can to present. Let's let's do a Steve Jobs. Can anybody do me a favor? If you are on the the uh, sign center at Wi-Fi, like he said, did you, did you hear him? Do me a favor. Get off the Wi-Fi. If there is a Wi-Fi, check your phones. Go airplane mode. It'll help everybody present. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next up, we have uh, team name undecided. Uh, that is Brett, Colton, and Mac. Everyone give them a round of applause. Do you need an adapter? Are you just presenting from your phone? Yeah. Right. Okay. I, got a, I got a demo from. Um, you want to present? I'm going to do it through, my, through the computer. Okay. Okay. If not, that phone connects to this. Thank <laughs> you. 
guess I want to let another team go. No, we have two seconds. It's good. It's good. Okay. Sorry. So it's not for the iPhone, it's for the Android. We don't have one. How about uh, right? What's it, what's it called? The, the the media player on the Mac? Quick time. Quick time. It's new movie reporting. Excellent. So it's not Okay. This one says it's streaming, but it doesn't seem to be. So I'm recording this, we'll see what happens. teachers are doing um, and maybe a doctor or a couple other professionals it sort of opened their mind to see all different careers um, so we wanted to make the idea of having a STEM professional in the classroom accessible but the downside was always it took a whole day it took a lot of scheduling and it took time out of my day um, so we wanted to sort of alleviate that pain point with our concept 
So we wanted to give teachers an immediate way to ask STEM professionals a question in the classroom. Um, and we wanted STEM professionals to also have that immediacy to answer. Um, so we created um, a video platform. And the impact that it has, the ease of use for professionals to be able to use that without disrupting their workday. Um, it's scalable. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can use this, um, whether you're in Palm Beach and calling a STEM professional here or elsewhere. Um, and then the student impact, which I touched on a little bit, hearing from professionals. Um, opposite. Uh, the functionality of this is great. Teachers don't need any other equipment. I know teachers struggle to buy things like highlighters and paper. Um, they don't need to buy anything. It's a resource that they already have. And with the tap of a button, you can get connected to a STEM professional if someone has a question. Um, from the perspective of the STEM professional, all they do is press a button on their email or text, um, and they're in there. I know I keep doing it. Um, in terms of viability, it gives teachers access um, to all this knowledge from all these STEM professionals without any cost or need to schedule. And then for our innovation, we really used a progressive framework for the backend server and database. Um, and we focused on something that even though it's maybe complex in the backend, it's really simple for teachers to use than those that don't have tech knowledge. We also added in a rating system so that <clears throat> as people use the system, you can see who you want to answer these questions. Our future goals are to launch in Palm Beach County schools and then expand to other South Florida counties to answer a thousand questions by 2019, to get hosting and services sponsored to make it free for all educators, which we actually did today. Um, Nebula Agency has agreed to, to uh, sponsor that um, and to create a mobile app. I think it would be really good for us to talk about all of this in context with the app because it's really hard to get this in our heads about what we really do. So <clears throat> we are a app that allows students to ask questions from the classrooms at any time. So what's really cool about this app is that you as a STEM professional, I know all the judges are very, very busy. All you have to do as a STEM professional is come to our website and sign up for an account and that's all that you do. You type in your name, email address, and your area of expertise. And right now we just have four. But as the students ask a question, and we're gonna show you that right now, you're gonna get an immediate email notification to answer that on real time. So let's sign up as a teacher for the classroom. Let's say we're Billy Bob at uh, y at gmail.com. This will take me a while. Uh, what school do you teach in? That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> trying to yeah go really trying to go really quick. So as we register, we get to take into a dashboard where you can ask a question from your students. And first, you select the subject: uh, tech, science, mathematics, whatever you want. And we will send a question to our experts who has selected that specialty. So your subject could be. Uh, volcanoes and your uh, question could be how hot is lava submit so once you click submit your question is going to be sent to all the STEM professionals that are experts in that category and, right so yes our STEM professional is on the line right now, oh. and they're going to connect through video chat with us for the classroom. So once they connect, I'm going to be able to see their camera. So I'm going to accept their connection, and here they are. <laughs> <laughs> and that's time, everyone. That's great. Um, as you, you probably just, just saw, you just let anybody get on a video yeah, exactly. As you probably just saw, we have the rating system, um, and I'm sure a comment system will also be good to have people accept or reject incoming calls. And also, we plan to uh, implement OAuth with LinkedIn to get their profile picture, bio, to see if they're a real person, and incorporate all that information on the incoming call to kind of accept or reject the call coming in, so you don't get random creeps coming into your app. 
That's a really good point because some professionals probably don't have all the time in the world to answer in the, in the next two minutes. Um, but as we scale the app, maybe there are more professionals at hand. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, that was definitely something we talked about. Um, I mean, think about it. If you're a doctor and you're performing open heart surgery, you're not going to be answering this teacher's classroom looking for is an answer. So the idea is that we have many thousands, millions of STEM professionals always be always looking to help yeah. the students that it would just kind of naturally have uh, traction. We the were call also out, the call goes out to multiple people and the first one to answer is for first, answer first, first, So yeah. as we would go on we would sort of drill down into the subject. So maybe in the future it would be a marine biologist specializing <laughs> in seals that you would be contacting. We are using Aquilio uh, as our API for their video, but they also have an SMS integration. So if you get an SMS on your phone, you're much more willing to respond in real time rather than an email. Any other questions? Yep. Can you record the video so that you could save based on the question and create a uh, knowledge base so they wouldn't necessarily need to go Twilio to the knowledge base Twilio has Twilio that function, so. uh, but not with our app at the moment, but it would it would be possible to expand the functionality of our API that we're using. But we want that face-to-face -face interaction. And then screen sharing as that's, well. That's how it Let's say it's yeah, in terms of programming sharing. Let's move forward. Because the questions are great, but what we are asking for the judges is for them to judge and all that. So yeah, yeah. give them a chance to, to present. So again, more than happy for you guys to connect. Um, but uh, you know, if you have any uh, questions about technology oriented stuff, um, you know, we want to make sure the judges have enough time to get all the questions possible. Uh, so next up, we have Team FAU. Uh, these guys came in second place last year. So let's see what they got <laughs> round two. <laughs> Somebody left their glasses here and they don't uh, take them, took them, take them home. Oh. Sure? sure no, I'll, I'll take them. I appreciate that. You're honest. I'm not really honest. I'm Devian, and along with Richard, I'm pushing the team FAU. And before I start explaining what our solution is, let me give you a quick story. So the other day, when I was going through the options of the projects that we can build for this hackathon, uh, the first option I saw was the matchmaking for mentorship program. I saw that list, went to Richard, and I said, dude, I got this. We're going to win this hackathon. I have the most amazing and crazy idea. We're gonna build Tinder <laughs> for matchmaking with men. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what he said? Hell no. <laughs> We're not doing that because I have a better idea. So let's hear what Richard has to say. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely didn't agree upon that initial idea, but when I was on the STEM Council website, our, I, I already noticed that they had a, a program going on as far as uh, connecting uh, mentors and mentees. Now don't get too um, uh, hypnotized by this press release. Um, one thing to notice is that um, there is really no clear call to action. So if you look at the how category, it just says coordinated through the uh, United Way. There's really, I don't see a phone number, I don't see an email. So if I'm a potential mentor, I have no idea what's actually going on. But not to take away from this press release, there is still great marketing uh, material. Um, there just seems to be uh, a lack of lead management. Um, and uh, we're gonna get into a demo here. But one thing we wanna stress about our demo is, after speaking with uh, uh, Julia and Nancy uh, of the STEM Council, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. Um, the Palm Beach County School District, in, in, in most cases, is very low tech, and um, they have very low income. Um, um, not to say an agency like New York could back something and, and throw some money, but we wanted to uh, take advantage of the pre-existing tools that teachers are comfortable with, Google Sheets, 
um, but we, we didn't want to get too, too crazy. Um, so let's just hop right into the demo. Uh, so it's just a tiny URL. Uh, this is something that can be placed um, at the bottom of a press release or blasted out amongst the community. Thank you, CC Cleaner, for alerting me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so it's just a tiny URL, um, and it's going to take you to a landing page. Um, now keep in mind, this is very mobile friendly. We had a mobile uh, first approach to this. Um, there is no a complex uh, CMS like WordPress or Drupal or Squarespace on the back end. It's simply a, a drag and drop tool that um, somebody on the STEM council can make a pretty modern day looking marketing material. Uh, keep in mind here, we are on 3G. We're getting a little break with that, but we're trying to uh, stress the mobile first aspect of this. So it's just a simple landing page. So we took that um, PDF that they have, we transposed the information. Um, we have a clear call to action, not only with that button up there, um, but we also have links uh, as well as more buttons. So the call to action is let's get started. So you're a potential mentor, you're, you, you stumbled upon this link and you come across this form here. Um, it's a very a mobile first form. Uh, we're using job form cards. So as we go through here, first name, Rich Andrews. Keep in mind we are on 3G. Uh, this form builder is also drag and drop, so making it really easy for STEM Council to use. Organization, FAU. Best time for me to mentor is, all these questions are customizable. availability I'm just kidding. Just Not yet. all right so experience um, let's hackathons. Just, yeah hackathon in a short sentence areas of interest so I'm into science technology don't ask me to do math engineering don't ask me to build anything um, optional comments just the testing so the magic happens um, when we click submit so when we click submit after speaking with Julie and Nancy we ask how's your uh, familiarity with Google Sheets um, so as this uh, is submitted, automatically our submission oh. is compiled as well as Dave Yang filled this out while we're speaking as well. So nice. it's automatically on the sh uh, uh, Google Sheets. We could share this with the uh, STEM council or the whole school district. Um, but enough of the demo, we're gonna have uh, Rishi here get into our technology stack and some of the tools that we use. That's actually time. Oh, but really? If any of the judges wanna ask about the technology stack. Excellent. Or can that questions be customized at? Uh, job forms cards. It's a simple login. You go in there. I'm sure we could uh, teach some teenagers how to do it, but mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty confident the STEM council could take it over. Mm -hmm. So this is just a sign up for the mentor, though. Is, is mm -hmm. there a any kind of vetting process that goes in place that I think that, it all in the Yeah, the, the, the vetting would take place research. with the STEM council. Um, mm -hmm. Once they have that uh, uh, lead sheet, they would be able to reach out and uh, and, and vet the uh, vet the mentors. Any other questions? All right. Awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. All right. So next up, we have Team A. Great team name. Team A. As in A team, but backwards. They're <laughs> dyslexic. <laughs> Uh, and after them, uh, we're going to have Team Red Stapler. I'm dyslexic, by the way. It sounded right to me. <laughs> yep, yes, sir. Try it on the other side. It'll be easier because that would move. Or else you have to face them. Just put it on the other side. It'll work there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up to the bird pod. It's up to the No, there were chairs in there. I'm seeing you guys. You'll see it pop up in a second. So, uh, you have a web page? No, I found uh, the uh, web page. Are you seeing something there? Okay. Yeah. Let you come up in a second. There you go. Nice. <laughs> They're Canadian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a knife. That's, <laughs> that's a problem. How many, on our How many slots do you have? Click on the next one, you can present from there. Oh, it's uh, that's okay. Just wait and then refresh it. There's so much awesomeness in this that it, your computer can't handle it. I'm so we're seeing what you guys are saying. It, yeah. So your computer's frozen. If you you have to eliminate some some processes you have going on here. That's what's up. Yeah. You guys can click on each one. Yeah. They present this one. Oh, so it's kind of it has to reload. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right, guys. We are Team A, and our project name is Project A. Um, so the solution. Uh, what did we aim to do? We wanted to tackle the first um, the first subject, which was co connecting classrooms with STEM professionals. Um, our team, so my name is Jan. I'm currently in uh, Jim York's Palm Beach Code School. Um, this is Ole. You did the uh, Iron Hack, right? Yeah, I did the Iron Hack about a year ago. And this is Eeyore. The Iron Hack as well. Okay. Um, so simplicity and usability go hand in hand. You have to have a, a simple design, something clean, something quick that works and is accessible to everyone. Um, so how our website works. You just go on the page and you'll see the live demo in a second. You just view the listings and you connect. Now that means you connect either with a mentor or you connect with the classroom as a mentor. Um, there, there is a search option which lets you search through everything. Uh, you search the whole website for the listings and you, we also implement hashtags when you create your post either as a mentor or as a classroom. Um, so how do you post something? Just click post. You log in and you can also share it. Uh, you share that through LinkedIn and you also sign in through LinkedIn. Now when you visit the page, you can just visit it. But if you wanna create a posting, you don't have to create an account and remember yet another password and your username. All you do is just uh, log in through your LinkedIn account. Um, and then how do you connect with somebody? When you go to that post, there's a button to make a call directly from uh, either your phone or the computer. You can email them, um, you can share it through your LinkedIn profile, and most importantly, this will help our community. 
Um, so you want to go ahead and do the demo. Pull that up. The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's reload everything. So this is our landing page and we want to make it as simple as possible. So we made two options if you visit our uh, application. So either you're a teacher and looking for the companies or either you're a professional and looking for the classrooms. So for example, if you're a teacher, you show the list of all the companies that are offering right now the internships or uh, different other things that you want, you can manage or you can always switch back to the classroom or companies. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to implement is to make it easy to search for any uh, posting that you want. So the searching is uh, instant and like when you're looking for some, for example, internship, it shows up only internships, only com companies that are offering the internships. And also if you click on the, on the ha hashtag, hashtags, so we implemented the hashtags because uh, it's well known, uh, really good tool to search the relevant information and it works really good with the existing social media like Twitter. So if you click on the hashtag, it's automatically searching based on that hashtag. So the idea was just like to have a like single page, you know, application mostly. Very simple, very easy to use. You don't have to like scroll through on different pages. And then um, to create the posts, you just go here, you sign in with LinkedIn. So if you're not signed in, you have to prove your identity somehow. Okay. So you'll, pop, you'll uh, show the form. You can see if you're uh, is the teacher or professional or the professional. I'll see that I'm offering this. You can see the name is automatically there from your LinkedIn. It pulls that data. Um, just put a picture, some contact information for you. And that's, that's, that's time, guys. Time. And that's also, okay. like the, the hashtags are automatically, uh, our app is implementing hashtags for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. through the LinkedIn to uh, verify your ident identity so you cannot just post any post without like uh, uh, logging in and the posts are expiring uh, automatically after uh, two weeks so and then it can also be modified like but yeah to answer your question we don't have any way to we didn't find any way to moderate we want to make yeah. it you know as simple as possible mm -hmm. so just go with that idea that posts you know expire after a certain time and then if you want to post again just go and post again so how, did, how does one administrate it? Is there is this um, what, what's the stack? Of this? What is this? this is uh, Mongo and Node on the back end and front end. It's just uh, it's a plain JavaScript. We're using a native web component, so we don't want to use any uh, framework to make it easy to integrate to any existing website. So it's a it's a web component that are already so just native for the browser to query for relations.
next up, we have uh, the team uh, Red Stapler, uh, hailing mostly from uh, Florida Power and Light. All right. Yeah. Function. Emphasis on fun. <laughs> Let's say that way we're contractually obligatory.
Oh yeah, and then finally we've got the little chat bot here, so you can interact with the chat bot. You can just ask it questions and uh, go ahead and get get information about uh, you, you know what you're looking for. Click events, then let's say who am I? So who are you? much you can come in let's say for example give me next like for example someone comes in most common thing people search for someone needs help or something this can actually help people put you contact someone comes to you for example wants to find out information who do I contact in school like guidance counselor I don't want to go to your website to find it that's time Are ready. I don't know about those guys. <laughs> I, I promise you, I didn't put you last. That was Jeremy. I was trying to first. Google and 
getting a massive information back can be a little overwhelming. So the idea with ours was, of course, to connect students in a way that would be meaningful to them in the classroom. So the best way um, to approach this, as we thought, was there were two steps in this procedure. So the first is we have the providers, okay? These would be the tech professionals, um, anyone with availability, as uh, stated in the first option, these can be people with um, offering tutoring services, educational services, they can offer their um, place for field trips as one we're in currently. Um, it could also be companies with opportunities such as um, mentorship opportunities, internships, and things like that. Um, the students, on the other hand, they have a bit of a simpler task using this app because it really just relies on them searching for these providers who have uh, basically added their information to our database. So the best part about this app, I think, is that it really uh, hinges on this idea of locality. So we have plenty of high quality students as we have high quality educators and companies willing to offer their services. So just simply putting their names out there, these providers, and then having the availability for students to search for them um, makes it quite simple for everyone involved. And um, we really took to heart Joe's message the other night on Friday that sometimes making that first connection, your first impression with um, a STEM field can make all the difference as you go forward. So we don't simply want it to be something where it's one event about a specific topic that you're not quite interested in, but that's all that was available. We would like for professionals to be able to list what services they offer when they're available and have the teacher reach out and make that connection and maybe explain what they would like a professional to be able to come visit their class and explain, just as one example. So we'll briefly go over the web application that we made. Um, it is called Link EDU. So it's sparking the first connection. So uh, because it's a web application, it'll be very easy for the PBC STEM Council to go ahead and implement. This can be, you know, booted up on any server that they have. Um, it's responsive, so it really allows them to, um, uh, because of the open source uh, nature of the software as well, allows them to really integrate this in any way they would like. So the application itself has some pretty basic uh, components, a login. So this is where uh, providers would go ahead and log in, put in their information. They'll get another screen here to add, uh, say, uh, uh, events that they would be sponsoring in the future just for the sake of time. We won't go through that kind of form process, but um, we'll also go through uh, register here. I apologize, login is for the uh, provider there. And we also have an about us here. Yeah, yeah touch. Uh, Laptop. So this is uh, some of uh, the information uh, about our application here. And then the main portion of our application is find connections here. So if we click that, this is going to go to our main portion of the site. You guys got disconnected. Um, On the Wi-Fi. Like yeah, what that would actually show if you click Get Connections, uh, we had a few um, pre-established connections set up and it shows featured connections, so you can always go in and have just suggestions given to you. But there's also a query form where you can search based on um, tech keywords and there's actually a Google Maps API functionality that would allow you to search just for any general events nearby, just should you not have anything in mind. Yep. The next implementation would then be to connect the maps with the contacts. So depending on what contact you uh, filter for, you would then get spe um, specific markers on the map that is related to that field. Um. Are you on the guest? Yes, yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah. Keep talking, guys. Keep talking. Did it just go down for everyone? Yeah. Okay. We'll give them just a, a handful more minutes um, if they can get that back up. But um, if we want to shift over to judging questions now, and then if we can get it back up here in a second, we can go look at that real quick. I think it's down for everyone. Right now. Full internet's down. Any questions? Um, we have our code available on a GitHub repository. Um, if anybody's interested, we have uh, uh, the design that we've done as well. And it is available on Azure server, so it is uh, uh, available um, not locally, but actually remotely to anybody who would like to uh, view the application. Your hotspot? 
Yes. What's the, uh, what's the tech stack? Uh, tech stack is um, .NET. So um, we have uh, Angular on the front end, .NET on the back end, and then we're using as or as our Here's the slide, guys. Sorry about the technical details. Okay. Yeah, so here you can actually see our query form there where you can type in an address your city if you want to just find any general locations, as you know many people can, but just in case you're, you're stuck for ideas, you can filter by keyword. Um, and then you can query our own database of uh, providers here, which you see a few examples down there. Um, you can click on the address there to actually be directed to the location on the map as well. And of course, there's information like the website, contact email, and so forth. Yeah, so this is an example of us going ahead and putting in a query here using our um, custom database. So make sure I don't get some fat fingers here. So let's see. And then we're going to search for, say, uh, some events um, with the keyword computer. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. We're going to get a little map up here. And then if we click on this marker here, this is going to give us the event name and then the date that uh, event is scheduled. So the next implementation of the map would be then to give more information on these uh, 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 events, um, give, uh, say, mentors that will be available there, and uh, future events related to this uh, one that they've selected that they could uh, attend. So that's time. Okay. Thank you guys very, very much. And sorry about the internet, we'll be writing a very strongly worded Facebook post to Comcast. <laughs> uh, next up is Hack in a Box. <laughs> Another round of applause for the coordinators, all the volunteers. <laughs> Also a round of applause for all you guys. Great ideas so far. This has been an awesome event. together STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. If you're a student in STEM today, the thing that ties this together is really code. It's writing software. That's the skill that all of these students are going to need to have. Another thing we heard the other night that uh, there are 140 different languages being spoken in the school district here. What ties those students together? All of them should be able to code. Great quote for, from Steve Jobs. Everybody in this country should learn to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. That's sort of the premise of our concept. The problem is that many of our students are not learning to code. Uh, we talked to Julia from the school district the other night and she said, uh, point blank, you need to do a better job with computer science. So our goal with this project is to become the first school district in the country that make, make computer programming a required part of the curriculum. It's kind of crazy to think that we're graduating kids today that haven't had any exposure to programming. So, of course, we can't make that happen in 24 hours. Uh, kind of a big lift, but our first step is just to increase the number of students that have exposure to coding uh, by creating tools and making it more efficient for them uh, to do that type of activity. Our solution is Hack in the Box. It's really staring us in the face right here today. It's this event, a hackathon. It's an awesome way for people to not only learn new skills and express their creativity, but to get together through technology. And so what we wanted to do was reduce the barriers to entry and make it more efficient to plan these events. An event like this is actually not that easy to plan. There's a lot of stuff that has to go into it. There's a lot of expense, and we're looking to make that more efficient and eliminate some of the red tape. So it's a website. It's live right now. You can go to it at hackinthebox.us. 
Uh, STEM teacher would enter a few key pieces of information. Uh, we build them a website. We build them all the rules and important information they have to have to sort of uh, compliance, make sure that everything is legit with, with their hackathon. And then they can share that landing page out to the participants. So we talked to Joe, who, who planned this hackathon. He's fresh after doing one of these. Would this have saved you time? And he estimated that uh, this could have saved between 20 and 40 hours worth of time in planning this hackathon by automating some of the things we have. But I'll let you hear it in his own words. Cool. <laughs> you thought you weren't being recorded. That's kind of looks weird. A quick demo of it working. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna um, enter the form fields in front of you, but you go to our website, uh, enter a few key pieces of information, uh, upload a photo, choose your dates, and then yeah, what you're presented with is we create a, a beautiful landing <laughs> page. For you. Uh, we have a link to register. We have all the pertinent information. We have rules and regulations, code of conduct. Uh, no need to get a legal team or hire a lawyer to get that. Uh, you present with PDFs that are merged with all the important information that you need to have, especially when you're dealing with minors. This is very important. We're, we're dealing with copyright assignment, so it's, it's important that we check those boxes. Now, uh, we don't have to figure that out. We've already figured that out and, and made it available to everybody. Um, so, as far as impact and functionality, uh, th this is, you know, a lot of times today, technology, people see it as isolating each other. And we see this hackathon was a great example of technology bringing people together. Uh, so it's also a tool for students to build experience with launching real projects, which is very valuable in the marketplace. It also uh, lets them gain exposure with what they've been able to do. And so what we've done, the functionality, and we've automated the pieces that we're able to automate to just reduce the time and expense it takes to plan one of these events and, and execute one of these events. As far as viability and innovation, it's viable. It's working right now. You, you can go there and do this. Uh, it, it's very inexpensive. It's, it's built on an open source platform, and so the, the cost of ownership is very low, and it scales. And, and we believe it's an out-of-the-box concept because we're using the box itself. Instead of trying to come here and win a hackathon, we came here and looked at what does the hackathon do that we can benefit from and apply that for the good of the community? And that's time. Thank you.
If you want to connect with us, this is Colton and Brett. Colton, go ahead. So we were inspired by this because a lot of kids and a lot of students overall, they don't have the patience to go and put in all the stuff for a LinkedIn. And the main idea of our app is, is, is that it's a very easy way for students to go and put information and go ahead and do a lot of networking. Hence our name, Navi, because it's for novices looking to seek more work experience. All right, so yeah, Brett, you yeah. Yeah, so right now we're logging in, we're going to register with the application, and um, it's going to take us over to the next view, and this works This works out in both ways for our companies or students, but we'll go ahead with the student route for now. Um, go ahead, take my profile picture to identify me. <laughs> I'm not very funny, but whatever. Okay, so, so, yeah, so we're filling, yeah, so we're filling out general information right now, right? right? So we have the name and we have the about. But what is uh, we have what's one of the entities we, we only have a few entities um, is this interest and this is very important for us because um, these are you kind of spoke about I spoke on how like it's kind of um, beginners and we, we want to uh, be clear that it's um, interest so what have you added thus far so so, so far I did PHP C sharp and Java is maybe some of my interest some some, some of the interest but right but let's say like. Um, maybe we're all like, interested in pizza, but that's not appropriate for this environment. <laughs> so, but we'll do it anyway to see what happens. So, what we're showing here is that regardless, although these are already you know exist in the database, but you can add as well. Okay. Okay. So, so I hit done. So I hit done. Do you want to say something, Colton? So this essentially the way that we find areas nearby and we match students with local companies is through a search algorithm. And to put it in its most simplest terms. What it does is it takes the amount of skills that you have with that company and what that company is interested in, and it does it based off of a Haberstam formula and put in the most simplest terms, it uses that to find the longitude and latitude and find the most close company to you and it uses a logarithmic, log, log, logarithmic relationship with the distance so it scales proportionally based off of skill level and distance. Yeah, skill level and distance. What, what we have in common, the skills that the company has posted, so the company, there's two, is you have the company and, uh, of course, the student. Okay. To post skills or um, stuff they're interested in. So for right here, you see um, our top three uh, matches um, for, um, for our student, which is myself. And also we have, um, some resources so like um, so yeah in this case um, I don't know if you guys remember but uh, you know Java was selected as one of his interests so here's a resource that also already exists in the database yeah, that maps to that and of course there's a link if we go back we can click on I'm interested button okay so now go ahead yeah so this is say like I this here was one of my um, top matches okay Razor that's a comp company I'm interested in I could you know reach out maybe via email, email. to them via email chat etc etc let's move on to the um, I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what we also built, because um, we're bored now, uh, <laughs> so this was me and Colton, hard work, you know, he, you know, put the effort, but um, so I should be able to manage interests. Okay. So, there's no authentication here thus far, but so this was, I threw this together, um, you know, uh, essentially I can add to this list, right? But I, we also implemented this. So, he added pizza. Right. Okay. So, now I can, of course, <clears throat> um, remove that. Because we don't want that, and yeah, that's not you know, but we're gonna unlock it because pizza is a great interest to have. But if we go back to the home page, sorry about that. We can also the resources. Remember the intro to Spring that we had that showed up in his uh, feed. Um, we can also manage those as well. Uh, this is powered by PHP, MySQL backend, uh, plain old JavaScript here. This is a Cordova. And then iOS, anything, on. anything, on. anything, on. anything no, special there? Um, no, just pretty much just use Swift and then a few external libraries and um, Firebase to store images. Yeah, which is cool, really helpful. Anything to say, Colton? Um, <laughs> another thing that I sort of found was really interesting about this was, like, n out of probably about 500 kids in my high school, n I couldn't find a single other high schooler that had a LinkedIn account. So that was a big benefit to what I think this could be, because a lot of students don't have the patience to put in all this information. This is quick, easy, 
and allows students an opportunity to quickly get access to job opportunities in their area uh, without putting in a whole a crazy amount of time for it. That's said. Awesome. Guys. Last time they, they dropped uh, uh, glasses, I have to wear them. Someone left a mouse, I gotta wear it. So if it's, your, it's not your mouse, don't worry about it. If it is your mouse, I just realized what I just said. Then, what? Yes, I don't know where it is. You know where it is? This works great on my seven year old. Here. I'm the one that's delusional. You guys are both delusional, that's why you're buddies. Too late. Try being in the Slack channel with them. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the judges and uh, I'm going to take Kate because we're actually going to go back into Discovery, one of the numbers. Uh, so we're going to go into a conference room. We're going to tally up the scores. In the meantime, uh, Damien and Jeremy, God right. bless your souls, uh, you're going to be here with them. Uh, they're going to take a group picture. They're also going to tell you a little bit about some of the other opportunities to get involved in Palm Beach Tech. So we should be back here uh, very shortly. Yeah, so let's do the group picture first. Can I get all the participants up here? All the participants here. Everybody, if you presented up here, come back. Back up here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> nice, we got the legs. 
We only have one year. One year. We have one year. Next week, we have one year. Every kid has 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 Picture, so if I talk, they, it doesn't matter on the picture, right? So <laughs> last year, we we only had two coaches. Well, we had three. There were only two loud ones. Now, because of his uh, throat throw, there's only one loud one. There's the only one I was got to sleep. Hey, 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 exactly, thank exactly. You. Thank you so much for everybody who came out and participated in this. I really want to thank everybody who helped us out at Palm Beach Tech. It is a, uh, a nightly day you can't thing speak. that we have to do to put this together. I want to thank the Science Center for uh, hosting us. That venue was amazing. Thank you so much, Science Center. I know I saw a lot of new faces. This is our only second, uh, our second hackathon. So how many people are out here for the first time? Can I get to raise your hands? Nice. Yeah. How many people didn't uh, know anybody when they first got here? Nice. And, uh, now, I knew my how, mama. How are you guys uh, nice uh, lifelong friends from now on, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, very cool. That's what we want to do here. We want to support the community. That's what this hackathon is about, is to help our fellow nerds connect with other fellow nerds and give back the best way we can. And the way we know how to is to build stuff, right? So I was impressed by everything I saw. I hope that this uh, STEM council can use everything that they have uh, been provided. Um, thank you for the STEM center for um, uh, giving their topics to hack on. Uh, I look forward to working with you all in the future again, and hope to see you out at uh, the next one, 2019, or we're doing one next week. Everyone down here again next week? Yeah. yeah. Next week. Oh! So we have uh, a lot of events coming up. Uh, has everybody signed up to the uh, Palm Beach Tech uh, Slack channel? It should be by now. Um, you guys are aware that I run a JavaScript meetup group? How many JavaScript uh, people are going to come out uh, next you Tuesday? Too? Yeah. We got one coming up too today. I might get you guys out here. Awesome. We have uh, one of our participants. No. No, we have uh, Dylan coming down talking about how to uh, prototype in uh, one of his uh, fancy new tools. So if you want to come learn how to build the JavaScript uh, prototype really quickly, Dylan is your man to come do that. And then so my uh, event is the last Tuesday of every month. And Damien's is the first Tuesday of every month. So if you guys are in the Boca area and, and want to talk JavaScript, Damien runs the Palm Beach, uh, the Boat of JS, and I run the Palm Beach JS. Um, I think you're welcome to go to both. No, no, yes. You can't. You can't come to <laughs> Until his has more, you know, people than mine, please uh, go to his. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. In my defense, 
his fence. I built mine from the ground up. He oh. oh. Ooh. <laughs> my defense, before that, there was like a hundred people. Well, oh. Just, just yeah. quick. Forget competition aside. What? Competition aside, both of these are two of the biggest meetups in South Florida, period. They have uh, about uh, 1,700 members between them. So these are massive meetups. They're really great events. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, would, I highly recommend them to, to everybody in the tech industry. Because come on, we all do jobs here at some level, right? Yeah. So check it out. Absolutely. So what, what I like to ask the participants is, uh, it's like since it's your first time, what did you guys like about this? I want to talk to the people who didn't know anybody. What, what was your favorite thing about the hackathon? Food. Nice. <laughs> the food. Food. The food. Yeah. 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 Canadian is <laughs> Thanks, uh, Rick Blaylock. This is amazing. So this is Damien and I on the developer channel going back and forth over and over again. So any, yeah, yeah. anything we can do to so brighten up everybody's sometimes. day? Sometimes. Oh, come on, internet. Do it for us. Oh, There's no great. sound necessary. I want you guys to imagine what the sound is going to be like. It's hysterical. Come on. Don't fail me now. Dance. Do a song and dance real quick. All right. <gasps> Last time we did that, not now. And look at that. They knew you were Canadian. Is that Demi? <laughs> well, something happened. That's all right. That's all right. All right, cool. So yes, that's our that's our Slack channel. Um, 
we, we love to communicate with everybody. If you have a question about something, there's someone always willing to help out there. Uh, sometimes that's how I solve some of my problems, and I love trying to answer uh, any JavaScript questions that come through that channel. Um, Rick, Damien, and I are always on there, uh, just trying to figure out what you know to chat. Rick's the one to post up that there, so uh, come post your questions there, and we'll see how we can help. I want to hear from some other new people who haven't who haven't been here before. I want to uh, Team Nebula. This is your first time. Yeah. yeah. What would you guys like? Well, like. Besides the food and both the coaches. Our teammates were great, but also um, <laughs> our team was made up of both developers, designers, a project manager, and so we sort of emulated what we do at work every day here. <laughs> so it was just uh, work day. You, you guys worked on the weekend. Yeah. They literally <laughs> love work so much that they decided <laughs> to continue it for the whole weekend. Let's ask over the next time your boss is not around. It, next no, it was, it was nice to be able to, like, I don't develop. Um, I'm a designer, so it was nice to be able to use our different skill sets to, to collaborate on something. Nice. That was one of the things that a lot of uh, people were uh, starving for, was designers and the visual aspect of it. So it's like when I was out trying to promote this, I was, designers, come in, project managers, come in, because there was all developers, no one had that visual aspect, or as strong as it was this time. So thank you for coming out. Yes. Designers. And next time, more designers, come out, please. Sarah Very actually fun. volunteered to be a coach to help out with design mm -hmm. and presentation, and Joe actually says I'd rather you participate. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's more important to be a part of it in the participation standpoint because they were so hungry last time for a, a design talent. So thank you for uh, joining. Spread the word. <laughs> Red, Red Staple, you guys are another uh, company team that came together and did stuff and you adopted somebody. How'd that go? What, what was your guys' favorite part of that? Uh, I want to be in Tech Crash. I wanted to <laughs>
this is a very boring subject, but I work I'm sorry, but we bore you. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a second. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. hey, uh, it's going to be $2,500 cash. All right. The way, the way all of these cash prizes work, it's dependent on the teams. The teams have to to divvy that up. So before we leave here today, I'm going to need just a main point of contact. Obviously, I have everyone's contact information for each team. So we can, and you can see the rules about this if you want to look at the website, palmbeachtech.org slash hackathon. and review all that. basically says, you know, we're going to talk to the teams teams will decide how they want to divvy it up. If they can't come to an agreement, we're going to divvy it up equitably amongst uh, all the people there. All right. So again, first prize is $2,500. Second prize is $1,000. And third prize is $500. All right. Now, of those prizes, uh, we're going to figure out how we're going to divvy them up. We're going to send you guys checks. And you know we're going to make sure to provide uh, some some fancy other recognition as well, but you guys will obviously uh, be promoted on our website, everything else, and we'll do a press release all set and done. So I'm going to get started, uh, and we're actually, uh, just a quick change of pace, we're going to award a fourth place prize because there was actually 0.5 points difference between third and fourth place. Wow. <laughs> Amazing prize, amazing. So in fourth place, with 68.5 points total, Ooh. hailing from Boca Raton, Tech Garage. What do you want? Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. You got you got the picture with it off? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So there's uh you talk.
<laughs> awesome. Congratulations, guys. In second place, $1,000. You know, I thought this was nautical because we were talking about ships a minute ago. Team Undecided. All about complaining, and apparently you talk just fine. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good job, guys. Good job. Again, these guys worked all night as well. Uh, really, I mean, it, it's amazing that anybody was able to work 24 hours straight. But, uh, you know, this last team uh, was one of them. Um, yeah, they were working at least all night between one or two different people. Uh, you know, a hackathon is supposed to be 24 hours. Some of the teams that won here today have embodied that. But uh, what we have in the first place uh, hits all, all of our judging criteria. It's very well-rounded with a total score of 73 points. Red Stabler. Wow. <laughs>